Americans have always been fascinated by the art and architecture of ancient Egypt. Early archaeological texts influenced some of the earliest Egyptian revival designs in the United States, which included motifs such as hieroglyphs, sphinxes, obelisks, and pyramids. With the widespread fascination with Egyptian tombs and talk of the afterlife, these influences quickly found their way into American funerary art. This movement began, in part, at Mount Auburn Cemetery outside of Boston, the first rural or garden cemetery in the United States. In 1842, Mount Auburn erected an Egyptian Revival granite gateway, one of the earliest examples of the style. Across the country, designers began to incorporate Egyptian motifs into cemetery gates, memorials, and mausoleums. This attraction began to wane shortly after the conclusion of the American Civil War. A large granite sphinx at Mount Auburn Cemetery, honoring soldiers lost in battle, was the last major Egyptian Revival cemetery monument in the Victorian era. Forty years later, designers again became enchanted with Egyptian-inspired funerary art. The artisans at George Dodds & Sons Granite Company in Xenia, Ohio were among the first. In 1915, they designed and constructed an Egyptian Revival mausoleum complete with two granite sphinxes for the Harper family in Cedarville's North Cemetery. More Egyptian Revival mausoleums by the firm followed, including the Houston Mausoleum in nearby South Charleston. In June 1922, Addie McGilvery, the grieving spouse of Charles McGilvery, consulted with Dodd's Granite Company on a mausoleum design for Ferncliff Cemetery. She likely met with her Springfield representative, Harold Drake, who would have echoed the language used in Dodd's marketing materials. The epics and peoples of the past are largely known and judged by the character of the monuments they have left behind. Dodd's marketing materials focused heavily on Egyptian designs, including a romanticized depiction of the pyramids and sphinx on the cover of their modern memorial art catalog. Dodd's in-house architect, Ralph Hall, immediately got to work on the design. He finished the plans on July 17, 1922, only 20 days after Charles McGilvery's passing. To help Addie envision the completed mausoleum, Dodds presented her with a perspective painting of the design. The McGilvery mausoleum is reminiscent of earlier Dodds commissions, although the clean lines and uncluttered ornamentation show early influences of the Art Deco style. The mausoleum is constructed of solid Victoria white granite from Dodds Keene, New Hampshire quarries. The Cavetto cornice, a frequent element in Egyptian revival design, curves into a half circle at the top of the mausoleum's four sides. Embellishments were reserved for the main elevation. On either side of the entrance, the designers placed two stylized urns planted with Tricina and assorted greenery. The mausoleum's two columns are Art Deco interpretations of those found in ancient Egypt. The columns and urns share similar in size lines and cavetto curves, unifying the structure into one harmonious whole. Above, the raised letters of the McGilvery name are carved out of a single block of granite. On each side of the name, the designers place lotus flowers in the Egyptian style, a symbol of rebirth. The winged globe with Uriai is the mausoleum's most identifiable feature, as well as the most ubiquitous symbol in Egyptian revival architecture. The three overlapping sets of falcon wings symbolize the king, the sun, and the sky, while the globe represents the Egyptian god Horus. The rearing snakes, or Uriai, are poised to strike, warding off evil spirits from the tomb. Beyond the mausoleum's bronze lotus-clad entry doors, the visitor finds an elegant interior. The ceiling, walls, and vaults are finished in white marble, while the floor is polished Milford pink granite from the company's Massachusetts quarries. The bodies of Addie Francella and Charles Frank McGilvery rest on opposite sides of the corridor. Architect Ralph Hall continued the antiquarian theme by calling them catacombs in the architectural drawings. At the end of the corridor, Hall envisioned a leaded glass window with a scene of pyramids and palm trees. Addie opted instead for a simple clear glass window with a protective bronze grille that mimics the pattern on the doors. Beneath the window, a simple marble bench provided rest during Addie's visits to the tomb. The McGilvery Mausoleum was ahead of its time. Months after its completion, English archaeologist Howard Carter discovered the nearly intact tomb of Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun, setting off a tsunami of Egyptian-influenced design around the world. Ralph Hall's unusual design became almost commonplace overnight, but thankfully no less beautiful. In December 1935, the body of Addie McGilvery was interred in the mausoleum's south vault, a space she had reserved 13 years earlier. 
Like the Egyptian pharaohs, the McGilvery seemed to have been forgotten with the passing of time. Hopefully, this elegant tomb will stand as a reminder of their remarkable lives, causing future generations to rediscover their kind acts of charity and generous philanthropy in the Springfield community.